be my first guide ever for TeamLiquid.net. We're just going to go through uh, one of the heroes that I'm more well known for, which happens to be uh, Storm Spirit, which I recently just played in the defense against Fen Hunters. If you want to check that out, I won't spoil it for you. But needless to say, this is uh, just one of the heroes that I kind of focus in on and something I'm hopefully I'm decently well known for. But anyways, so we'll just kind of hop into this random game. Um, this is one of the pub games that I just kind of recently played. And although pub games obviously aren't a metric, the large majority of people watching this guide are going to be um, playing public matchmaking and not competitive. But I do use these uh, same principles when I play competitively as well. So a few things to note about Storm. Really, really good all-around game. His early game is a little bit weak for obvious reasons, just the lack of an escape, um, the lack of any sort of way of reasonably harassing a hero in the mid lane. And the mid lane is where you should always aim to go, by the way, but what I generally aim to do with Storm, and I'll just actually just skip the beginning of this, um, is I try to just trade evenly farm-wise with people, and then I, um, depending on who I go mid against, depends uh, how well I want to do with the lane. So, for example, before I even pick the hero, I notice that this guy picks Pudge, and I'm almost certain that guy's going to be mid against me. And so far, their lineup is pretty pleasing to, them, to me anyways. They uh, they don't have any really hard disables, aside from the uh, bite, but if I'm a good player, I can keep away from this. The laning phase against Pudge is also pretty decent. On top of that, uh, the Coddle Mana Leak is actually quite good, but if I do a good job of avoiding him, I can actually kill him pretty easily. That made no sense, but regardless, he has no stun, so I'll kill him pretty easily. And we have a draw on our team, which Precision R just makes it really nice for me in the lane. So the first thing we'll always level up is a Static Remnant. This is going to be our farming tool. It's kind of what makes it so that you can just kind of safely farm in the lane, and it makes it really difficult for people to deny. I know um, I saw a guide way back when posted on Team Liquid that uh, said that you should level your electric vortex and normally I would agree to always level your stun first on a hero but storms is kinda like a double-edged sword as it slows you by 50 percent once you have your ultimate that means absolutely nothing but as it stands early game remnant is what you want to get the downside to remnant is there's a cast time for one you'll cast it and then half a second later it'll blow up so you kinda have to time things out in terms of CS because if you leave a creep too low you'll get denied and if you do it too early then it just won't kill so I'll pause really quick here. Um, some few things I'd like to point out. For one, my item build. The item build has very little variance. If I'm against a hero like Batrider or Zeus, I would actually replace the mantle with a wand. Or not a wand, a stick. Otherwise, I'm pretty comfortable with the amount of regen I have, especially against a Pudge, because he can't trade right clicks with me, and he can't actually stand in Remnant. So me going for the Tango's... And just the tangos is pretty good. Also, the thing I don't like about salve or clarities is I feel like it takes you out of the lane for way too long. And so that's something that I feel like I can just skip. But the reason uh, for the mantle is for obvious reasons it ups your mana pool. It makes your right click damage a lot higher. And the three ironwood branches are just cheap stats you can buy. And it has the option of turning into a wand for me. And then the uh, reason I don't get a salve is just, as I said, it takes you out of the fight for too long. And you want to get a bottle as about as quick quickly as you possibly can. Notice I'm only about 400 gold for my bottle. This guy on the other hand is... I think he repicked actually because he should be able to afford tangos and another ironwood branch but regardless uh, this guy is 550 gold away from his bottle. And generally the bottle timing you want to get around is about um, two minutes for the first rune. So let's just assume that first rune is always going to be taken by somebody. I see this warlock going for it, so after that point it's moot. You just want to get the two minute rune, and that'll allow you to get really good control in the lane. For example, if you get an illusion or a double damage or a haste or something like that, it really helps you out in the lane. So um, Another thing that I think a lot of mid guides focus on is blocking, blocking the middle lane. I know that uh, a lot of people know that it's important, but it's not quite certain why. For a hero like Storm, where let's say that this was an invoker for example, and I'm a hero like Storm, I can't trade right clicks with him, so I'm going to have to heavily rely on the uh, uphill advantage. Also, casting Remnant, it hits everything in an AoE, so it's going to naturally push out the lane in general, meaning that uh, if the lane starts out around here for me and I'm using Remnant to farm, it'll quickly get to around here, and that's unsafe for me to farm, so I need a, as big of an advantage as I can in terms of that. And so we'll uh, just kind of delay along here. I'll hide this thing. 
though. Notice that the pull, the pull, or the block actually started around here too. There's no reason being up there as the creeps don't actually thin out before that. But my block was kind of bad. But for some reason, this guy just decided, okay, well, the block is screwed. But anyway, so I'll start up on this area of the uh, the hill, meaning that this guy can't actually trade right clicks with me or can't accurately fight with me. Uh, against a hero like Pudge or any melee, I actually use my Remnant a lot to uh, zone. I don't know what this Warlock was doing. He actually helped this Pudge a lot this way, though, by kind of zoning me out of the lane. This was a little bit silly, but... Also notice, um, when I'm in the mid, I actually stay a bit low. So, oftentimes the easiest way for people to gank me is going to be coming in from the top. So I actually want to stay around this area for the most part just to be free, but I actually have a ward there so I can see him coming. I'll actually fog the die. There you go. So I do have vision of this guy. I know he's there, so I pull back a little to the tower, but I don't want to give him complete lane control. So he's had a lot of help mid already as it stands. Uh, for CS, by the way, that you can't absolutely get, then I recommend just remnanting it. You're trading mana for CS at this point, and that's a good thing, as Martha Stewart would say. So I think I'm actually going to pull into here. So notice I'm attacking the range creep. The reason I'm doing that is because the range creep is attacking this one, meaning that I'll get both creeps with the remnant rather than just one. So I just kind of maximize the efficiency of my remnant. I'm using my overload charge always to either CS or harass. It's uh, I notice a lot of people just immediately throw the rem or the overload charge, but that's the only reliable way of uh, harassing. So it's really important that you're using it evenly. But so notice how. Now that I've been using Remnant, the uh, lane kind of pushes up. This isn't actually necessarily a bad thing, as now the bottle's coming, so I'm actually going to be pretty proactive about uh, about spamming the lane out, because I don't want to lose out on any XP that I can. Notice, too, that I always make sure that when I cast my Remnant, the creep HP is about evened out, so I'll, attack, I'll switch from attacking one to another. So, lane's pushed out. I feel pretty good about checking the rune because I think at most I'll lose about 1 CS. And this guy can't actually contest me for the rune because I pushed it up and he would lose too much XP going for it. So I'll just get a free rune here. I think I'll miss about... So far I've missed 1 CS in exchange for an illusion rune. I think I'll miss 2 actually, but it's not the worst thing in the world as I'm winning an experience anyways. So, But I notice he gets his bottle fast right there. Um, he does hook me. But I can actually fight him pretty easily. As long as, uh, against a hero like Pudge, if this is a common matchup for you, if you fight within the Remnant and just kind of kite him around and not directly fight him, like Remnant hit him, Remnant hit him, and run around and creeps, he'll do a pretty good job, like right now. So I Remnant, I hit him. Now I can pull him, and just a silly death for him. If he had hit the hook, I still would have lived, but just confidence. The fact that I was okay in the lane. And also, um, two of my range creeps are at the bottom of the hill, and that range creep, I just didn't want any variance with uphill miss, so I remnanted for it. The next item I'll pick up after the bottle, of course, is uh, just boots. I want to run places fast, run really fast. I don't know. I don't know how to describe the reason why you should get boots. They're just helpful. And then after that, um, here's where my build differs from a lot of people. A lot of people I know like going the Orchid, and yes, the Orchid does give you a bit better damage and the components are easier to get, but I feel like Bloodstone is just... represents... Uh, the essence of Storm perfectly in that it's a snowball hero and it's a snowball item. If Storm does bad early, then it doesn't really matter. So, Plus, Bloodstone gives you better mana regen, I feel. It allows you to stay on the map more, and especially against a hero like Pudge, I would die every single time if I didn't have the point booster HP at level 8 to him. So Notice that I always even out the HPs of the creeps. That was kind of bad. I should have hit more than that, but I really wanted to go and get the rune. So I push out the wave around the 4 minute mark, and then I'm just going to go get the rune. It's a haste rune. And from what I can see, um, I'm not level 6 yet. I actually prefer not to gank before 6. I noticed that the Rubik's trying to gank mid though, so it should be a pretty easy kill. I don't actually know why he ran up. I think he should have ran down, but free kill regardless, especially since I have a haste rune. He goes to the hook, but there's absolutely no way he's going to kill me. So I don't know why he's doing this. Decent KS, but so now I've got a really good start. 20 CS at uh, four minutes is not ideal, but remember the start I had with the Warlock coming in, and in general that kind of just frazzled me. But I do have a kill. I I think I got first blood and a kill on top of that. So notice when I cast my Remnant, by the way, I always get into the center of the creeps, and I always make sure that um, I kill the range creep no matter what. 
if anything, that's the most important thing that you should be doing, killing the range creep. I think I actually died to this guy here. I'm, I'm awful. I thought I had enough leeway. I didn't think the hook would reach far enough, but... It's good to also show uh, what happens when you're behind in a game. The reason I actually did that is because I'm really greedy and I like having a TP at all times. If I'm going to go back to base, I like having a, enough money for a TP to go back, so... The first thing I do, though, is I buy the energy booster, and what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to disassemble it and just get a bloodstone. A lot of people get wand on storm, but I feel like it delays the bloodstone. It's a little greedy to just go straight for the bloodstone, but it's still... I don't know. It is a pub, and I feel pretty confident, especially against that kind of lineup. They they do have a silencer, uh, the dismember, the leak, and the stun, but in general they don't have too much burst damage once I get my bloodstone, I should have enough to live. And they have a lot of heroes that are really easily pick-offable, like Warlock, Coddle, and uh, Keep It a Light and Silencer. Those are three really easy heroes to kill, so I kind of left my Rubik to die. Okay, I think this guy had enough leeway to run. Yep. So I'm going to pick up the rune anytime I can. Um, by the way, I should comment briefly at least on the skill build. So I know a lot of people feel like it's an attractive option to level the static remnant, but the math actually works out so that for mana cost, maxing overload first over remnant actually does more damage and it's more mana efficient. For example, let's say you do decide to go the orchid route, you won't have this 809 mana, like the plus 250 that the arcane provides. So things like um, rolling in and neutraling and stuff, it's not as efficient if you don't have mana boots. And especially since the mana cost is only at 70, which is really low and nice. Plus CSing is pretty easy once you max overload. If you uh, get into the center of the creeps actually, and you remnant once and hit the over, uh, like the range creep twice, then you'll kill it anyways. So it's not a big deal. As long as you're being pretty efficient about the way that you farm, like always getting into the center of creeps and then targeting down weak creeps, then you'll be okay. Um, but the skill build, let's go back to that. So I really like to go, if you didn't notice for some reason, one level of static remnant, one level of overload, three in a pull. Pull allows you to, uh, or the electric vortex, and that, what that allows you to do is when you initially roll in and you hit somebody, you can uh, pull them, hit them again, making sure you get the overload charge off, remnant, hit them again, and it allows you to get all three hits off. And you can only do that with three levels of vortex, like really cleanly. So that's um, a big reason why the build exists as it is. But anyways, after that, you only need three levels. I'll uh, max the Overload, then I'll max the Remnant, and then I'll get the fourth level of Vortex. And you'll always level your ultimate, by the way. But anyways, continuing on, we'll see me go back mid. I'll actually um, play a pretty farm-heavy style in the beginning, because I just want to rush out that Bloodstone as quickly as possible, and it like lowers the amount of variance if I farm as opposed to try to go for kills. If you try to go for kills, there's a certain amount of relying on your teammates and stuff like that. And let's just say you're solo queuing and you know you want to just become a storm pub stomper. Then this is the kind of way that you should be playing anyways. So I see the Pudge TP in. I'm still pretty confident against him. Like I can just kind of get in the middle of here and farm. Getting all the CS that I can. Trading farm evenly with Storm is pretty good. And if anybody's wondering about the Bloodstone timing, I try to get it pre... to be generous about pre-18 minutes. Anything before 18 minutes is reasonable if you're new to Storm. Even 20... I've even gotten it at 20 minutes and have been able to make a relatively large impact, so... Really not too concerned about the rest of my team. I see that the score is 5-4. to four. As long as I get my Bloodstone at a reasonable time, I feel pretty good about this. So notice that whenever I use my Remnant, it always hits the range creep. So I'm just farming as efficiently as I possibly can, so... No uphill vision, so I'll kind of play around with my illusions and stuff. I actually noticed that the silencer's there. That's not too good, but... We'll do a little short rolls just to uh, maximize my efficiency. And I'm actually going to kill this guy just because he extended too much. But... That's uh, kind of the bad reason of playing silencer as a support. You really need levels. Which is something that that guy just doesn't have. Notice uh, I actually skip creeps, that's something that you can really do really easily and efficiently with Storm. And it's not even that bad with level 1 Remnant, because if you get into the middle of the creep wave twice with Remnant, then you can pretty much clear all the uh, creeps pretty easily and reasonably. So, uh, another thing that I want to just get into detail about, so I am going to go Bloodstone, and oftentimes you can either go for the Point Booster first or the Perseverance. There's two, there's a fairly large difference in the two, it's uh, if I play against 
a hero mid that can solo kill me, like Shadow Fiend, Pudge, or uh, Queen of Pain, for example, then I'll actually go for the point booster, just so I have a little more HP to play with, and I can be a little safer. For example, if Pudge hooks me at level 7 and bites me and rots me and all that, I'll die with 700 HP. Whereas with 900, I'll have enough HP to still roll out. And the Perseverance, though, it's a bit better if you can get it really quickly, because it allows you to stay on the map for as long as possible, which is what you want with Storm, ideally. But that's kind of the large difference. And it gives you a bit of damage, but... So we'll see. I think I got the Point Booster, yeah, because I was against a Pudge. So that's kind of how I decide which component that I go for first. And it, there's, like, an important distinction to be made. Like, and against an Invoker, I might get a, the Perseverance and stuff, because it lets me jungle and all that jazz, but... I think I actually kill this guy. Make sure that you don't waste rem or overload hits. That's the only really big part about playing Storm that people are normally bad about. Other than calculating distance, but that's just something you get a feel for. So, notice I always get the rem the overload hit off. Like, more than anything, that's what I, uh... That's what I prioritize. Getting as many remnant or overload hits as I can. So I get into the center of the creeps again after hitting that twice. Because I have such a high level of overload, it's not necessary for me to do anything more. Just CS where I can. Get free kills where I can as well. I see this guy blasting. I think I should have actually rolled on him. But I was kind of afraid that the Pudge was just sitting behind him or something like that. It's kind of rare for this guy to be this out of position. But So the Pudge is coming through. A big thing to note is, I do have a decent chunk of mana, 530. But it's not enough for me to feel confident to like roll in and um, get a kill and still have enough to roll out. I actually play really conservatively early with my mana, just because uh, I don't want anything to stop me from getting the Bloodstone as quickly as possible. One of the really bad things about Bloodstone is that most of the components cost like quite a bit. That's where Orchid is a little bit better, whereas you know you can buy the Sobe Mask, the uh, Robe of the Magi's, and they're like half the cost of most of uh, Bloodstone's components. But so I want to just be as efficient as possible with farming. I did have a bit of mana left, but not enough that I wanted to stay in lane. Just enough so that I could farm those two waves, and that should be nearly enough money for my Bloodstone. If I'm doing uh, it close enough, then, or close enough, if I continue the timing as is, then I should get my Bloodstone around 13, 14 minutes. That's pretty reasonable. The one thing I really like about Storm, too, is like jungling is just super efficient on him as well, so don't be afraid to jungle. Oh, I'm gonna roll dodge that stun. Which he didn't even cast. That was kind of a weird thing. I think he shoots the hook there, and I think I die. Yeah, okay, so that was my second death this game. I should have seen that coming, especially since the CK was there. But uh, I lost a lot of money with that, too. All things considered, um, we did get a tower at top. Our drill is getting decent farm, and I still think I'm leading in CS. We'll just take a look at that really quickly. So, I do have 61 CS compared to 45 to the next one, so... Yay! I don't actually know how to get rid of this thing. Oh god. Well, it's just gonna be up there for the rest of the game. <laughs> uh, how about we do XP per minute? That'll be kinda neat, right? So, I still have a sizable lead on that, meaning that I can just, like, farm... If I feel really unsafe and, um... Let's say that their team is just, like, constantly roaming me or camping me, then I'll actually just go to the jungle in neutral. As long as, uh, you don't run into any pesky mud golems, then you do a fine job of jungling a storm too. So we'll just try to get our bloodstone as quick as possible. And uh, I'll just play really conservatively just so, uh, once again, I don't lose money at a large rate. It does cost quite a bit to get to all the components. I think I still get around a 15 minute bloodstone this game, if I remember correctly. But always using my remnant to its full potential. Also when I jungle, you know, I always try to get into the center so my remnant hits all the creeps at once. But I'll pass through. Oh, is that a ward? They had a ward there. Should have been smarter. So the remnant tries to hit as many things as possible. Notice how I target the large creep, so when I remnant this last time, I'll get both. Just a little bit more efficient way of doing things. And I'll pick up the rune. Use my bottle hits as many times as I can. I want to stay as close to full mana as I possibly can. It's just a really big deal. But notice how I'm not afraid to neutral at all. This is actually the fourth camp that I've killed this game. Don't be afraid to neutral. This Keeper of the Light is sitting right behind him, but it shouldn't be enough. 
Like, a Keeper of the Light doesn't deter me from killing 600 HP, uh... I noticed, too, that I always get as many roam or overload hits as I can. The only thing that kind of sucked there was that, um, that uh, the Keeper of the Light was there and I got Global Silence. But, okay, really big thing there, too, is that when he was running away and I was right there, instead of uh, remnanting, or instead of rolling, I remnanted and I hit him because I knew that the range would be enough. Just a really important concept to note that if you're trying to chase somebody, you can still remnant and stuff. I actually live here, that'd be pretty nifty, right? Super jukes, super jukes. I don't know why that guy didn't even try hook. I think he was gonna come over the top and try to hook me, but. Sweet, I lived. One inch. I should have checked that guy had no mana and turned around, but. I'm bad. So we'll just kind of saunter off here and be safe. I'm gonna get, um,. My bloodstone at around 15 minutes, which is really productive this game, but I wish I could show that again. Like, if there was, like, an instant replay feature where I could, like, show you what I did to that CK. I hope everyone understood anyways. So, if you're in range to hit, but you don't want to roll, but you just need a little more damage, then you can remnant and then just cast the overload hit on them. It's just more efficient way of killing. So, get into the center, get both. Well, I should have gotten both. Darn you, range creep. And the first thing I'm going to do is, I know for a fact I'm going to go to the jungle after I kill this creep wave, right? Because I don't have a lot of HP left, but I have just enough to uh, jungle pretty easily. And I'm pretty big about having enough um, mana. Like, I, I like to, especially when I have a bloodstone, I like to be as full as possible for everything. Unless there's a rune there. Okay, I'm going insane. So I'll pick up the rune, use up all the charges and all that, and this is where I really start getting aggressive. I've got a relatively quick bloodstone, so this is where I kind of want to capitalize by getting as many kills as I can. I'll just use up all the bottle charges, I think. Yes, I do. That's what I would have done. So I see the pudge there. I don't want to roll in on that, because that will cost me around like 500 mana, and then to use the pull and the remnant would use pretty much all of it. And if anybody were behind him, I would just kind of die. So the thing about Storm is, when I play in pubs, it seems really aggressive, but for the most part, it's just calculated aggression. So this Keeper of the Light is just an easy kill, just because he has, like, no disables, and, you know, his entire team happened to be sitting behind him, but... For the most part, I would always go in on that. Um, the first thing I do with Storm, often in games, is I try to fig uh, figure out who I'm going to kill in a game. Like, for me, the Silencer, the Keeper of the Light, and the Warlock are the really obvious and easy targets. So those are the ones that are, I'm going to put emphasis on for killing. But So I don't have a lot of HP, but I do have a lot of mana, so I should just be efficient and I should jungle when I can with this. The next item for me um, is I'm going to get Treads, just so I can kind of uh, more easily get my combo off. And then after the Treads, this is actually where my build... Um, changes the most. It's either I go the Orchid route, which gives you a silence, yes, and it also gives you, um, and no, this is just for pub play, but if you go the Orchid route, uh, it gives you a lot more damage and it's really helpful uh, because you can cast the silence midair and all that jazz, but the Lincolns is a little more defensive, but both kind of work. Against this team, I'd actually get the, uh, the Lincolns just because I'm a little bit afraid of the, uh, the Chaos Knight stun and the Dismember are the only things that I'm too concerned about. I don't actually get BKB, because I think it makes the game boring. <laughs> By all means, feel free to get a BKB, but even in competitive play, I'm a bit leery about getting it really early. Especially since uh, if you don't get a major item like Bloodstone or Orchid before you get a BKB, I feel like your hero does no, da no damage and you also have no mana regen, so you have no sustainability on the map. Which is what Bloodstone really does for you, right? Like, I haven't gone back to base and I've just been spamming remnants on uh, on large neutral camps and I haven't actually run out of mana ever, whereas you can't really do that with Orchid. With Orchid, I have like half the mana regen. Plus, every kill you get with Storm is such a big thing because it adds a Bloodstone charge. So that's why I kind of play conservatively. I never trade one for one once I get the Bloodstone. That's not what you look for when you play a hero like Storm with a Bloodstone. You want to look for like the big fights where you really come out on top. So you want to be as safe as possible getting as many kills as you possibly can. Hopefully he walks through that remnant charge. 
oftentimes I'll just kind of lay remnant traps, not just for vision, but to see if they'll go through it, and it better lets me estimate how much um, HP I need to get through. I think the Pudge is actually going to mess around with me here if I remember this replay correctly, and he actually shouldn't because it's just a complete waste of his time because his team's getting into a fight over here. So the global goes off, I know that he'll throw the hook down thinking that I'll go for the rune or I'll go up. But, so I'm just messing around with him hoping that he goes the other way. I don't know why he's wasted so much time on this. I think the CK is coming too and I've just kind of done nothing for like a full minute. I didn't actually know they had a ward there, so I knew that the hook would go off, so it's just safer to cast the pull, or the roll. So we just did a lot of loop-de-loops and <laughs> didn't actually accomplish a whole lot. I'm actually kind of just trying to bait out that guy's hook, just to see if he'll do it for fun. If that, like, isn't gonna work, I'll just go back to farming. Like, farm- this is a really good bloodstone timing the time that I had it at, and I haven't died and I haven't lost any, so it's not like a pressing need for me to uh, get into fights or engagements yet. But So I'll get the rune, then I'll engage bottom, and hopefully that goes well for us. The great thing about Storm 2 is I always feel confident, even when my uh, team is relatively far behind. Yeah, we are behind by two kills, and uh, I think the net worth is also... Their total gold is like slightly in our favor, but... I just don't like getting into 5-on-5 five five fights that are disadvantageous. I mean, they had the Warlock ult go off, the uh, CK ult go off, so that's just not worth it for me to fight. What Storm really uh, is weak against is like getting into large-scale engagements, especially early because people just will focus you down. So it's really good for you to get a few pickoffs early and then come to fights when you feel relatively advantaged. So this guy here, just a free kill. You know, little pickoffs like that. I'll, uh, I'll always shoot for And I think I actually go for this guy too, just because uh, it's worth it too. And I cast the remnant just to see where everybody is, and then I realize that it's not worth it because the pudge is there. I think they go for me here, but I don't actually cast the roll because uh, I don't have too much mana, so if I cast the roll too early, I'll just die. So I'm actually going to be as conservative as I can with my mana, just in case I want to turn around, which I actually do. So I'm gonna like look around my team, see if they want to fight, because I do have a DD rune and just enough HP to live. Because I know the stun was cast, so I'm not too afraid about anything. So I actually get the void stone first, and yes, I am gonna get the Lincolns just so I can kind of dodge a lot of the spells. And I think the Rubik recalls me here. So it looks like I'm playing really scared, but you're gonna see an explosion of activity for me pretty soon. The thing that's scary for me is I'm trying to identify whether or not they're gonna play as a team. And play as five because then I just can't and the better thing for me to do in a situation like that would be just to farm honestly just push out the other waves like get into the middle of creep waves cast remnant a bunch and just farm it's not worth it for you to get into unideal engagements especially with an item like bloodstone you know at four or five charges even seven it's pretty useless so we want to try to get it up to that uh, that money area which is like um, 10 to 12 and then you can kind of just get on a roll from there a uh, roll get it Oh, I cracked myself up. So we'll just go back to neutral farming because I don't know where... I only know where one hero is on the map, if you notice our vision. You know, we don't see these guys, so... It's not worth it for me to just roll in on the CK in the off chance that his entire team is just sitting behind there waiting and baiting him. Because their team fight is pretty strong right now. If I get globaled and the CK stuns me, I'll die every time. So what I want to do is I want to actually not come in at the beginning of the fight, but I want to come in after the first, like, salvo has been launched. Like after I know for a fact that the CK, or at least the Dismember, has gone off, then uh, I'll re-engage. I think we actually Roshan on here, and then from there the game goes south for the other team. Sorry I spoiled the game, but <laughs> I'm not going to show you a replay of a game where I did poorly, would I? So I know right now my score is only 4-2 at uh, 21 minutes, which is kind of slow, but in general the pace of this game has been a little off-putting because they've been... Like, if you notice, they've been running as 5 a lot, so... It's just, uh, a little scary. So, actually, now I want to fight. Like, I definitely want to fight. I have an Aegis, I have a Bloodstone, and that's, like, the perfect combination. So, what I noticed, what you'll notice first... Oh, uh, if I show the eye, is... I actually went for the heroes in the back first. The heroes that are in the front are usually, like, the CK and the Pudge, the ones that I want to avoid. But the heroes in the back, if played correctly, are usually the supports. And notice, these three are the ones that I want to kill, so I just kind of rolled past and went for them. And... You know, if the CK decides to go for me, the Chaos Knight, then all the good for my team, too, because he's the majority of their damage. But we'll just uh, pop back in here. How do I hit play? 
So I get stunned. Now I know that this stun is down, right? I feel pretty comfortable. And I can actually uh, pop the regen and actually just go back in if my team is ready. At the end of these fights and stuff like that, what I'm actually looking to do is I'm trying to see who I can pick off. And if I notice anybody, then I'll just go for them. So this is a good pick off. It's nice and clean. And our draw gets a really nice silence off, so I don't really have to worry about anything. And I think I'm going to re-engage here after I bottle once, which I do. The, the thing that I always look for to do with Storm is I always uh, see if I can re-engage. So, cast the Remnant. I do get stunned, but it doesn't matter even in the least. Notice how um, off, like I often don't even roll, I just cast the Remnant and hit. That's a big thing too, because it's just more mana efficient than casting, or casting the roll. Because it takes... Uh, 15 plus 7 percent of my total mana just to cast the uh, roll itself. So oftentimes the uh, the revenant will just be better. So now I've got 11 charges in my bloodstone and I feel really really confident about this game. Still keeping tabs on the runes. Look how fast my mana regen is. Just at 11 charges. It's like doubled now. So from this point on I'm just gonna look at those three heroes and kill them as many times as I possibly can. The Pudge isn't an ideal target, because uh, he has so much HP, by the time I try to kill him, somebody will have helped him. And he has Dismember, and CK just, you know, he's also really tanky. He has a Hood and a Wand and a Vid Booster, so it's not worth it for me to waste my time trying to kill him. Especially if he stuns and his entire team comes. The heroes that I want to go for are the ones that I can kill with my initial combo, and maybe a little bit of a follow-up. Because I don't quite have the mana pool or the mana regen to consistently chase really far. And the way that I play Storm in pubs especially is... Uh, I kind of play this like solo queue style where I do things by myself. I think it's a lot more fun in general and it's a pretty good way of playing the hero too. So here I go. Not sure what. I don't see anyone on the map again so notice that I just went back to farming and stuff. I am going to pick up this regen rune as we have vision of it. I believe this is our ward. Pick up the regen and then I'll just kind of clear out their jungle. I know that's what I do actually, just because everyone's missing on the map, and it's not worth it for me to kind of just like solo scout in a really scary place. So, farming, farming, farming. And my score is actually like, I've gotten like three more kills since the last time I looked at my score. So, I notice how I got into the middle of the creep wave and I cast the remnant. Da -da 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 the same thing I'll do for this wave as well. I think I'll just run past this. I'll always get the range creep more, no matter what. So that way I almost ensure that I get two creeps. And I'll just kind of back. This game in general was a little slow paced, but it's good for you guys to watch just because this is what you're supposed to do against a team that plays a little bit passive aggressively and doesn't just let you pick off their supports. This is the correct way to play against Storm for the most part, playing as five, but their team just had a lot of holes in it and this Chaos Knight's build was really inefficient. Like, a lot of tankiness but doesn't put out a lot of damage. And Storm, the great thing about him is once you get a Bloodstone and stuff, you can actually roll and just cast Remnant for farm. It's kind of like having an Anti-Mage with, with, uh, with a Battle Fury. It's the same thing, pretty much. So I know that they're all up here. I think they saw me roll past their tower. They definitely did, so they cast that Global, which is great for me. It's important for me to keep note of the spells that like scare me in fights. Um, the things that scare me in fights are Mana Leak, uh, the Pudge member, and the CK Stun. I like to have a relative idea of when those spells are up. So I know that the last or the Global Silence went off, so I know I have a lot more leeway. So playing a hero like Storm, especially since you're a little vulnerable, since you don't have a defensive item yet, it's good to just take note of uh, cooldowns and roughly when things are up and when things are down. So I actually see this Coddle spam the wave, and I actually know that he's going to go back, but... I know that a bunch of his teammates are down there, so free kill. I'll see if I can actually kill this guy too. Notice that I cast the remnant for vision to see where he was. If he decides to chase me for whatever reason, and the remnant actually sees him, then I'll just roll back in on him. I cast little bit, little bitty things. I don't know why this guy keeps trying to chase me. I'm just gonna kill him. No CK's coming. Saw him with the remnant. So I'm going to run. Oftentimes the Remnant's a really, really good scouting tool in general. So you should cast it in the middle of fights just so you have more access to a larger field of vision. So in, in the middle of fights, even if it hits nobody, and it's, for one, you get an overload charge out of it, and secondly, it gives you really good vision, so you can kind of figure out what you want to do in the fight. So I'm 8-2, I do have the Aegis still, so 
I'll play pretty aggressively, especially with the DD rune. I think I just roll in on this guy and try to pop him as fast as I can, because the Aegis is going to run out in about a minute. So, yes, I die. No, I don't really care. This fight's going to go really well for me in general. I know that uh, Global's down for a bit. The Dismember did go off. The CK stun went off as well, so I have a lot of leeway. Although the Mana Leak is a bit scary. Gosh, their lineup is really well suited to deal with Storm. But now I have my Lincolns! So, I have a bit more leeway. Notice that I still try to check for runes and all that. I think we saw the Pudge with that, so I'm just going to go in on him. Oh gosh. Okay, so I know that um, his stun is still up, but I saw the pull go off at the very least. Notice that I cast the Remnant for Vision. I always try to get as many uh, Overload hits as I can. So I cast the Remnant just so I know where everything is. Luckily I only got 2 seconds stun, and I think I can actually get a kill here if I play this correctly. I can get them to kind of think... What I do here is I don't roll all the way, I just do little mini rolls, so I think I make them think that uh, you know, maybe they can continue to chase me and hopefully I can turn around on somebody. Like they'll disperse in different directions thinking that I've gone, but at the same time I've conserved enough mana that I feel that I can fight. But a lot of 5 man Dota going on, so it's difficult for me to engage anything in fact. So I'll just run away again and go back to farming, which is what you should be doing. And I know the rune is top because it didn't spawn at bottom at the uh, 2 minute mark. So I see the Keeper of the Light spamming that wave. I'm going to pop the haste and I think I'm going to roll in on him. It's one of the few times his entire team isn't behind him and just get a free kill like that. I felt pretty confident about doing that because I had a haste rune and a Lincolns. So let's say for some reason the CK just happens to be there and he stuns, then I'll be able to block it with my Lincolns and I'll have enough time to roll or just haste away. So I'm not too concerned. Go back to neutraling. And we're just getting little kills like this. I, you know, I have 15 bloodstone charges, which is a decent amount, and we're slowly snowballing to a point where their entire team is going to have a really difficult time dealing with me. And I think I go for the orchid here just for the uh, extra attack speed and all that. It's just a useful item to get for storm. So, just go back to farming for a little bit. Let's actually see if anything happens in the next like two minutes. I don't actually know why I went back here. I think I just wanted my full bottle, and I want to grab the Robe of the Magi because I think I have my uh, one part of my Oblivion staff there. Probably a bad idea to go back. We'll just kind of zoom through this area. And I think now is the time that I actually want to get into team fights. Um, I have enough buffer targets, as in like my team is does a reasonable amount of damage. Like this Drow does enough damage so that they kind of have to go for her in fights. If they use everything on me, we win the fight regardless. And if they use everything on the Drow, then I feel pretty confident either way. I do a lot of farming, by the way, on Storm. A lot of people, when they play Storm, they just go all out aggression once they get a Bloodstone, but I feel like you still have to like have an even balance of farming. So I think bottom is where we're going to get into our first major, major engagement. So I actually saw the ward with the ward here. I actually saw the uh, Keeper of the Light, so I'm just going to jump past him. Notice that I always go for the heroes that are slightly out of position, and this is the great thing about Storm, because these guys, you know, they were over here when I was over here, but I was still able to kind of just catch up to them, and those are two free Bloodstone charges that I'm perfectly okay with. So I think I'm going to cast... Well, I guess I just back. They have vision of me here too. This was a little scary. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. But 17 Bloodstone Charges now, that's what I like to see. The mana regen is still only 41, but I think my Orchid is just about finished here, yeah. I only need the, uh, about 400 more gold from there, and then my DPS will be really big too. I already kill all the supports within uh, one combo, but I want to make it so that I kill their carries in the same combo as well. It'll speed up a little so you don't have to... See, I still get into the center of creeps, even in the uh, later stages of the game. And I uh, pretty passively farm a lot, too, with Storm, just because I never want to risk anything with my Bloodstone. It seems like I'm playing a really aggressive like while I'm playing, but for the most part, if you notice, it's just a lot of calculated farming and not wasting any of the opportunities I have farm-wise. 
You see the thing I did right there where I uh, rolled into CS? I actually advocate not doing that until you have a decent amount of mana regen. Otherwise, you're just going to have to back immediately. My storm is kind of focused or honed around the fact that I don't want to go back a lot. I want to stay out on the map as much as I possibly can. I think we just quickly rush here. Get another Aegis, play it safe. I actually really need an Aegis against a lineup like that, especially with the Global Silence. But I think from here we just... Uh, we try to engage in a fight. Still farming wherever I can. I'm still at most of the team fights. I'm still 12, 2, and 5. I've been in 17 of our 24 kills, so things are okay for us. Notice too that what I'm going to do in the beginning of the fight is I'm going to go for the easiest targets first, rack up free bloodstone charges, you know, get as much as I can out of the fight. So if the fight goes south, at least I'm getting bloodstone charges, and then I can engage. Uh, their main carries. Oftentimes too, the disables will come in the form of supports, so it's important that you just kind of get it, rid of as many support disables as you can in, for a fight for Storm. So they're just kind of holding the line here. I'm actually just going to wait on top. Just a bit of tentative back and forth, ballyhooing. I actually knew I was there the entire time, but I think we just passively take the tower. They're afraid to engage us, and rightly so. At this point, I've just become a little more too farmed, and we do have a draw. It's like an instant win here on pub games. But I just went top to farm. If their team is playing really scared, or they play as five, then it's not necessary for you to, like, five man as well. You can still farm really, really quickly with Storm. In fact, sometimes it's preferred just to farm. If you know where they are all on the map, and they're five man pushing a tower, then I feel pretty good. Just because I know where they are and I can safely farm. I think I actually just get annoyed and roll in on this. And of course I get globaled, stunned. A lot of spells are going to go off on me maybe. No, oh, no, I just kind of run away. Don't age. So, I'm going to go for the heroes over here. Some of the heroes in the back. Just the really easy to kill ones. And I'm not too concerned about the Pud. I still have my Lincolns up, so I'm not too afraid of anything. And I just get a free Bloodstone charge there, and... Man, they add up really, really quickly. So it's important for you to just get free kills wherever you can. And now I'm at 13 kills, which is still a little bit low. But for the most part, the control of the game is firmly in our favor. I still have the Aegis. We have 2300 gold. We have an Orchid as well. And so this is kind of the way you have to play it, though. If, if you get a BKB... You can play a lot more reckless than I do, but notice this guy just came slightly out of position. I'm just going to kill him. And I'm actually rolling little short distances, so I uh, create some space. So it's harder for them to target spells on me, for the most part. That's the reason why I do stuff like that. And I guess I could have turned around and died and then respawned and done stuff, but I really wanted my friend to die. Tell, don't tell him that. Now I'm at 14 kills, none of their supports can even stay on the map because of me. So it's just a really useful way of playing Storm. Picking off the heroes in the back that don't want to be picked off is the way I kind of rationalize it. So I noticed the uh, Keeper of the Light here, so I'm going to kill him. I don't actually care about the CK because what can he do? I'll just Lincoln's block the stun. And I think I can kill this guy too now that his stun is on CD. And I think he realizes that just a little too late. Notice how I roll past him as well and I cast Remnant, so he almost has to... Uh, he almost has to roll past the remnant to get any sort of fight off. And we do little rolls, like little micro rolls, just so we can uh, maximize the overload damage as well. But now we're at 16 kills. Feels pretty good. Got a lot of mana regen now. Now we're at 63. Now we've just kind of shot up at 21 bloodstone charges, and this is kind of the money zone. Anything past 20, and you're rocking a really, really good percentage of stuff. Um, you could get... A sheep stick here, but I think I decided to go Shiva's just because I wanted a little more AoE when I rolled in. So notice how I just roll in for the heroes in the back always. That's one of the three heroes that I really like going for. And then at this point the game doesn't really matter. I'm at uh, 17 kills, I'm able to kind of just do whatever I want at this point and no one can really stop me. Like, staying in the back at this point doesn't really keep anybody alive. 
think at this point we just kind of fountain farm and all that but i think that's where i end the game um thanks for watching if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below i know that this was a bit of a passive game but i just wanted to show you the reasons why i get blown